Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FI24 earnings conference call of Petronet LNG Limited, hosted by Philip Capital India Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nathan Tiwari from Philip Capital India Private Limited. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Thanks, Mr. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Philip Capital India Limited, I welcome everyone to Petronet LNG third quarter FI24 earnings call. We have the pleasure of having with us today Mr. Vinod Kumar Mishra, Director of Finance, Mr. Rakesh Chawla, VGM and President Finance, Mr. Gyanin Kumar Sharma, VGM and President Marketing, Mr. Vivek Mishra, CGM and VP Marketing, Mr. Dev Dejata, General Manager of Finance, Mr. Vikas Maheshwari, VP General Manager of Finance. I will now hand over the floor to management for their opening remarks, which shall be followed by a Q&A session. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Very good morning to all of you. <clears throat> First of all, I start this uh, conference with the very good news that we have registered highest ever PBT and PAT in this quarter of 1597 crore of PBT and 1191 crore of PAT. And also, nine month period also has registered, has registered a highest ever uh, PBT of 3,761 crore. So this is just highlight. Now I go to the main uh, concept. So the haze has been uh, utilized to the extent of 96% this time, and total throughput has been 218 TBTU as against 210 TBTU in the previous quarter, and 164 TBTU in the corresponding quarter. If you look at the haze and Kochi terminal together, we have registered 232 TBTU of uh, throughput in this quarter as against 223 uh, TBTU in the last quarter and uh, 167 TBTU in the corresponding quarter. And uh, quarterly performance, if you look at the PAT has been 1597 crore, TBT has been 1597 crore as against TBT of 1586 crore in the corresponding quarter and 1102 crore in the previous quarter. And PAT has been at this time, 1191 crore as against uh, 1186 crore in the corresponding quarter and 818 crore in the previous quarter. So if you look at the uh, growth, there has been 46% growth in fact as compared to previous quarter and almost 1% growth over the corresponding quarter. So this is the quarterly result. If you look at the nine month period, the throughput has been at the highest 646 TBTU as against 532 TBTU in the uh, previous year's uh, corresponding period. And the uh, total throughput this time has been for 685 TBTU as against 567 TBTU in the corresponding period of the previous year. So there is a growth of almost 21% in volume as compared to the uh, last year nine month period as compared to current year nine month period. So this is the growth and uh, if you look at the profitability for the nine month period, the total PBT has been 3,761 crore as against 3,517 crore in the uh, nine month period of previous years. And uh, if you look at the PAT, it has been 2,799 crore uh, this nine months period of this year as compared to the same period of uh, previous year of uh, around 2,626 crore. So there is a growth of almost 7% over that uh, pat also as compared to previous year's nine month period. So this has been possible because of the efficiency in operation and high utilization of the haze terminal. So these are the highlights I have just told you and uh, now floor is open for the question. Thank you very much sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask questions may please press star and one on the touchstone phone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. 
Participants are requested to use only handsets while asking our questions. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all participants in the conference, may we request you to limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. We'll take the first question from the line of Vivekanand Subra Subraman from Ambit Private Limited. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Thank you for taking my questions. Uh, I have two. So the Red Sea uh, disruptions that are happening, is that having any impact on the spot LNG trade? Uh, because I'm sure that, that there are several cargoes that are coming from markets other than Qatar, uh, especially the US ones. Uh, that's question one. The second one, could you give us an update on the uh, collection of the receivables? Uh, there, there were around uh, 1,300 crore of past receivables, 1280 to be exact and another 600 crore uh, that have gotten added. Could you give us an update on that? Thank you. Thank you. So the first question is regarding rates impact on the cargo coming to our terminal. So I must first clarify it that uh, we have long-term contact with RAS gas or now Qatar Energy, Qatar gas. So those cargoes coming from uh, Qatar, there is no threat to uh, uh, like uh, there is one in Red Sea, and uh, they are coming smoothly, there is no issue, long-term contract. As far as other contracts, we are saying any uh, volume coming from, because if any volume is coming from US, or from that side, then only this Red Sea threat is there, because anything which passes through Suez Canal and then comes to Red Sea, it is subject to some threat of this at these attacks by Houthis. But we don't foresee uh, on, in our uh, port that there is any threat because if at all there is any threat, it could be to the cargoes which are coming from US. So maybe, I'm not sure, but maybe uh, it may be for the cargoes uh, which Gale is bringing from US, if at all they are bringing. Although they have also swapped the volume, so there is very less likely. I have not for, uh, seen any uh, threat so far to LNG, LNG cargoes coming to our terminals. So this is the answer to question number one. Second question, you are saying that, uh, what has been uh, your second question? Update on the receivables and when, when do you think you're likely to collect that? I tell you, what has happened that there was a receivable of use of pay charges to the extent of 415 crore for the uh, calendar year 2021. And there is a uh, use of pay charges of 848 crore for uh, calendar year 2022. So total 1263 crore was outstanding. This year uh, we have reached a settlement with our uh, opticals uh, uh, regarding use of pay charges and uh, in fact uh, we have given them three year period to bring more volume uh, in this period. Till then uh, they have been asked to provide us bank guarantee to the extent of 415 crore for 21 and 848 crore for the year 22. So this is a use of charges this is, which is secured by bank guarantee. And if in three years means for 21 they have to bring the shortfall volumes by to December 2024. If they bring entire volume of this shortfall, which is there to the extent of 415 crore, whatever it is, then we will in that year may waive that uh, uh, use of pay charges if they don't bring any volume over and above the uh, committed volume uh, under ADP. If they don't bring any volume over and above the commitment in that year of 2024, say this year, then their bank guarantee will be in cash against use of charges. So this is the mechanism we have worked out, and this is more or less agreed by all the off-takers, including GSPC and BPCL, IFCL, and um, Torrent. They have all agreed it, and so accordingly we are going ahead. And for 2022 calendar year, use of charges of 848 crores if there is excess volume being brought by them by to December 2025, 
then we may waive this uh, user pay charges of 848 crore if they bring cargo's equivalent to volume of 848 crore. Okay, thank you for the update. Just to understand the uh, revenue that has been recognized, uh, yeah. what will happen if the volumes that that the optickers consume? Uh, what if they uh, what if they consume the uh, I mean the past shortfall during the three year period? Does this mean that you will have to then write back this revenue? No, no, what I'm saying is that there is no revenue loss. If we, if they bring more cargoes than uh, whatever commitment they have for that particular calendar year 2024, if they, if they bring more cargoes than their commitment, then to that extent, use pay charges will be waived off. It's not an adjustment. It will be waived off. And if it is waived off to that extent, maybe that they may not bring the entire volume in the current year. For, uh, which is the shortfall for 2021 calendar year. Then to that extent, the bank guarantee is there, we will encash it. Or they will pay it, we will return the bank guarantee. So that could be done. So what I am saying that my use of pay charges are now secure to that extent, that either they will have some extra volume, in that form it will be there, or if they don't bring any volume, it will be in cash and uh, this uh, user pay charges will be recovered. Uh, right. Um, I'm just trying to understand if they bring the extra volumes, then the the user pay charges that you have recognized till now, what will happen to them? I'm telling you that if they bring extra volume, it will be booked as uh, income of that year when they bring it over and above the ADQ uh, commitment. Okay. So that will be recognized as that year income. It means if they bring at the end of 24, this will be recognized as normal income at normal uh, regasification charges. It will be recognized. But in lieu of that, because they have made an effort to bring extra volume than they have committed. So as a dispensation, as a consideration, we will waive uh, user pay charges to that to that extent to that quantity which they have brought more over and above. ADP volume. If they say they don't bring any volume by the end of 2024 for the shortfall which has been there in 2021, then entire use of the charges will be recovered from them against the bank guarantee. If they pay it, okay. If they don't pay, we will encash the bank guarantee. So what I am saying that company is secured from loss of revenue in any case and there is no hit in the revenue. This is what I'm saying. Understood, sir. Thank you for the detailed explanation. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Somaya V from Avendis Park. Please go ahead. Oh, thanks, for the, thanks for the opportunity, sir. Uh, the first question in terms of uh, user pay charges that you have booked for the last Can calendar year. Your voice is uh, it. It's not that clear, sir. May we request you to use your handset, please? As the current participant has left the queue, we will move on to the next question, which is from the line of Sabri Hazarika from MK Global. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, good morning, sir. So I have two questions. Uh, first one is relating to this OPEC. So uh, can you give us uh, the reason why it has gone up, the other expenditure has gone up, and what should be the normalized recurring rate going ahead? Yeah, Sabri, there is, a, there is a provision of 228 crores mm -hmm. in the OPEC. If that is taken out, that is a uh, that is also a student accounting uh, system. Uh, we have created provision of 228 crores against the user pay receivables of uh, uh, CY21 and CY22. Uh, uh, that is not that is a time based provision only. Uh, and uh, if you take that out, 228 crores from the other expenses, then you will see that the other expenses are in line. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, so uh, as explained uh, in this uh, scheme of recovery uh, of user pay, once uh, they bring the volumes, then uh, then the revenues will be uh, rec uh, recorded, and also these provisions will be also reversed in due course of time. It has only been created to uh, as a prudent accounting uh, policy. 
no so so this is like from the first question itself so, so basically the accounting treatment will not be revenue recognition but because that you have already done in CY21 you recognize the revenue ha uh, whenever this revenue comes there are two things one is uh, suppose the revenue comes some extra volume comes in 2024 then first of all the 2024 regas rate will be applicable oh, not the 2021 or 22 because th- that is one plus there and second once that revenue is booked the already booked revenue of user pay will be reversed uh, as it has been explained so this is now currently how is that receivable so it will be a cash i mean 415 crore If it is like fully met up, then it will be it will be adjusted in the receivables, and it will be a cash gain rather than PNL gain. And whatever upside is there, that will be booked accordingly. And this provision also reverses. Is that yeah. the right way? So no, it's like that. That whatever provision we have made in that year, we will be booking revenue as it is. Means it is as good as coming in the same year and current year income. Yes. But as a consideration, we will think that if they have brought some volume over and above the committed volume for that particular calendar year 2024 then that will be considered for waiver of user fee charges so that will be adjusted all right sir got it and uh, it will not impact revenue you can say no uh, it will it will basically lead to uh, cash income i guess uh, anyway uh, secondly uh, the usual bookkeeping question so what was the service revenue and uh, in this impact and uh, gorgon volumes in dates yeah it's at uh, at gross margin level uh, impact is 136 crore and uh, there is a, yeah 36 crore yeah. there is a forest la- loss of 1 crore and uh, uh, a reversal of rent expenses of 8 crore and uh, depreciation and uh, 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 finance costs are 84 and 69 crore respectively Okay, and service income. Six hundred. Yeah, six hundred twenty-six crore. Regas service charge. Uh, Q three regas service charge is six hundred twenty-six crore, I think. And uh, six hundred twenty-three. This is uh, for the service cargo. Okay, and Gorgon volumes in the head. Gorgon volume in the head is uh, Gorgon volumes in the head year to date. Uh, I can tell you can uh, take the adjustment. Uh, year to date Gorgon volumes is uh, 14 uh, CBTs. 14 CBTs. 14.4. 14. Okay, and uh, trading gains and inventory gains. Trading gain is there uh, to the extent of 40 crores in this quarter. 40 crore as compared to 19 crore in Q2 and uh, 24 crore in the corresponding quarter. Right. And any inventory gain? Inventory gain 147 crore. Okay. So fair enough. I'll come back in that queue and all the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Probil Singh from ICICI Security. Yes. Please go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, just wanted to get a sense of from uh, the CapEx update, both on the capacity expansions that are going on, and any uh, update you can give us on the petrochemical project. That will be helpful. Thank you. Expansion project, as uh, you must be knowing, we have been updating you time and again that uh, our expansion of the H terminal from 17.5 mTPA to 22 and half mTPA. will be completed by march 2025 so after that it will be available for use okay and no. as regards this petrochemical uh, you have just uh, raised the question we have clarified last time also there is no not much update on that but that has been approved by the board and the investment we have already declared 20685 crore but this is including the soft cost so all those things are going on and uh, i think uh, now we are in the process of uh, finalizing all the uh, licenses selection and all those things are going on so maybe that we we, we have already ordered for licenses selection i think so that part is going on so it is in the process uh, not much update on that 
Okay, one fa small question if I may. Any uh, update, and forgive me if you have already answered this somewhere, on the uh, second level of Kochi connectivity, sir? The pipeline, there was a small stretch that was pending completion only. Yeah, yeah. Uh, update is that uh, uh, so far this uh, section of Coimbatore to Krishnagari is pending, 250 kilometers. And uh, as uh, Gail has committed, this will be completed by this year end. And it is already under review by and uh, uh, Pragati or the PMO office review. So we are hopeful that by this year end, uh, this will be connected to Bangalore. And uh, after that, it will be connected to the national gas grid. So FI 25, ideally, at least we should see some additional volumes coming through. That would be the expectation sir, from Kochi. We, we right? can hope it because I am also optimistic about the completion of this pipeline because once this is completed, then uh, it will be open for utilization because uh, there can be uh, more volume be consumed through this pipeline uh, for the southern India because uh, it's better to use uh, from the nearby terminal than bringing from the bowl or from the hedge. Uh, because then unified tariff uh, will be there, and if it is nearer to the source of gas, the uh, unified tariff will be 40 rupees, 39 something. And if it is away uh, by more than 1200 kilometers, then it may be in the range of 100 rupees. So I think uh, right. that concept will help us in utilization, more utilization of Kochi Tundra after connectivity with natural gas grid. Understood, sir. Thank you so much, and wish you the best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vikas Jain from CLSA. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, thanks for taking my question. Uh, a bit of an understanding. So, 2021, you had uh, accounted for 333 crores of user pay receivables, right? And of that, you have now created a provision of 228 crores. Firstly, is uh, what, I mean, any reason why, where the remaining 100 by 105 crores of remaining provision you have not yet created, or any particular reason why only 228? If I could understand that. So it's not like that. But 330 crores, I don't know where from you are taking. But total, I am telling you, it was including GST 448 crores. This was the total uh, user pay charges which is pending. And uh, we have made 2021, you said? 2021. Okay, okay. We have, we had made a provision of uh, around 20% last year of that. That means around 90 crore, you can say. And uh, we have made provision of 220 crore, 228 crore this year. And the provision is also made against 848 crore, which is for the calendar year 2022. Uh, it's 848 crore into uh, 20%. Anthony, 20% for the year, and for three quarters, we have made 15%. Because for every financial year, after one year, we are making provision of 20%. So since three quarters have already passed, so we are now we have decided to make provision on quarterly basis. So accordingly, we have made a provision of 15% of 848 crore. So this is uh, coming to 127 crore. And if you look at the last year provision of 448 crore, 30% of that we have made. So around 130 and divided by uh, this nine, it's a nine month period if we take it it will become around 100 crores almost. So total comes 228 crores. 128 you can say for the current year, 20% for this 848 crore and 100 crore for the previous year, 448 crore into 30% and uh, into nine divided by 12. So it comes to 100 around. So total so, 228 crores we have made this time. So just to kind of make it simple, of I think 894 crores of total user pay, right? Uh, 21 and 22 put together, 848 and, uh, sorry, not 800. 1300 crores of the user pay. How much provision have you made so far? Uh, in 28 plus 89. 89. 
So it is around 317 crore. Okay, so of 1300, say 317 crore, you have made still 1000 crores of uh, revenue which is booked. Now, essentially, how do we expect this to be? I mean, will you continue making provision every quarter or how would this work out? And why I say that is. If we do not make full provision, then when these volumes actually come in, in hopefully in 2024, then effectively you would, have, if provisions were not made, then that sale has already been booked in advance, right? So the volume would have been taken, but the adjustment will happen from the balance sheet receivables. So for you to recognize the revenue in this particular year, you'll have to make the provision to offset that. And so otherwise it will be adjusted with the balance sheet receivable, right? So I'm telling you what will happen. This is the, if you look at one year only, 2021, it will be, they have to bring addition volume by December 24. Correct. So this will be settled only the next year. Either way, either they don't bring, then it means you will encash the bank guarantee or they will pay it and we will return the bank guarantee. Both right. options are there. It will be recovered, matter is over. Correct. Question arises only when they bring addition volume over and above the commitment of the current year, current, yes. current calendar year 24. That we will consider and accordingly, whatever volume they have brought in, additional volume they have brought in this year, it will be uh, adjusted against the shortfall of 21. And to that extent, how whatever uh, use of charges are there, that will be written off. This is what we are going to do. Right. So basically, what I'm, I'm trying sorry to, to interrupt, Mr. Chan, I would request. This is the me. this is the same this is the same question. It is getting clarified. So please please allow me to complete it. So uh, what I'm asking you, sir, is there is a part of revenue which you have booked in advance. When they bring in the cargoes, unless you have made provisions for that, this will actually not be uh, kind of leading to a recognition of income in that particular quarter or year, right? Because you've already, it will be adjusted with the balance sheet. There's a cash impact, which you've said, either they bring in and pay you the money or they, you encash the bank guarantee that I understand. But from an income statement perspective, unless you have canceled it out the advance booking of revenue with a provision, this will not lead to fresh income recognition in that particular quarter, right? Uh, in the uh, the uh, revenue that has been already booked, the user pay charges, is a penal charge coming out of the contract. Okay. So, this penal, uh, uh, from the penal provision, this uh, uh, revenue has been booked. And whatever provision we are booking, that is a, as per, as per a prudent accounting practice, that is a time-based provision that we are booking. Up to this point, we are clear. And then, whatever volume, suppose, uh, whatever volume, suppose some uh, extra volume they bring in 2024, that extra volume will be treated as the revenue of 2024 only. And it will be a precondition for waiving of the penal charge, whatever has been booked in the past, if they bring some extra volume. So, if they bring some extra volume, this penal charge will be waived up to, to that extent. And if they do not bring, then the uh, through the bank guarantee mechanism, the recovery will be done against the penal charge only. So, this is how the accounting treatment has been done. Thank you, sir. Mr. Jain, may we request you to kindly rejoin the queue for follow-up questions as there are several participants waiting for their turn. May we request all the participants to limit their questions to one per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Murarga from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, yeah. Thanks for the opportunity. So just uh, following up, uh, so just to clarify, bank guarantee has been taken for the entire amount or take out of pay or only a partial amount? Bank guarantee will be for entire amount of 215 crore for 21 and 848 crore for 2000. And why, why, when will the bank guarantee be received? It is under settlement. It has been principally agreed with the off-takers. And so 
we are in the process some of them has given also but others are in the process of giving it and also settlement agreement will also be formally signed and the offset is on value and offset is on value or volume or volume because i guess the value obviously will be higher on the same volume now with the higher no, 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 uh, no, 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 figure standard no, no. volume will be compared see because the uh, user pay charges in 21 would have will be at a lower uh, regard charges but in 24 the volume the additional volume they bring in it will be charged at higher regard charges so we'll compare how much additional volume they have brought in and to that extent how much would have been the user pay charges uh, multiplied by uh, this uh, regard charges of 2021 that will be based Okay. And, and then no, it will be booked as if uh, current year income, whatever addition volume will come. And there is no interest included in this like three year of interest loss that has happened. Is this that's, that's not in the equation? These kind of things are not considered when the settlement is done. These things are not uh, thought of because uh, we are doing something. At least we are able to recover it somehow. Uh, otherwise, uh, there is a lot of issues, and it's not. Uh, it's a big deal also if we are settling something very old okay so interest part is not there of course right and also But could you share some of these these are regas regasification charges of 5% high we are getting two years 21 was at least if you look at uh, five years each year if they bring in 24 almost 15% of the regas charges has already increased for the addition volume If you compare with that, then you have to see the interest, and you will find that it is still beneficial. Well, and could you share some update on the regas contract, the long-term contract? Regas contract is already there uh, up to 2036, or with the optics uh, to the extent of uh, 8.25 MMPPA. Sorry, I meant the the contract with Qatar. Oh, yes, <laughs> that is in process. and as when there is any declaration we will inform you and uh, we are under discussion so we cannot disclose those uh, important issues we will declare it definitely it will be known to you as and when we sign it okay thanks a lot thank you the next question is from the line of chinmay gandri from camera hsbc life insurance please go ahead yeah Just a follow. Uh, so regarding this uh, settlement, so uh, when was this uh, reach? Uh, and uh, you mentioned that uh, some of the players have given bank guarantees. And so what kind of bank guarantees you would have received? No, uh, just uh, repeat again. Your voice is not so clear. Come closer. Uh, uh, it's muffled little actually. Yeah. Uh, so my question is, uh, so uh, so when was this uh, settlement uh, reached uh, uh, with respect to the uh, of tickers, and also like uh, how much uh, percentage of bank guarantees have we received, uh, received of uh, the total outstanding? This is in process. You will find next quarter will update you, but we are in process. We cannot uh, do something in a hurry that they should submit immediately. It takes time, but. Uh, Somehow they have reached to the agreement, and we have uh, we are going in that direction. And uh, maybe next uh, by the end of next quarter it should come. We will inform you, update it. But bank guarantee is yet to be received. Uh, some of them have given, some of them have not given. So we are in the process of getting those bank guarantees also and settlement agreement signed. Okay, thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you so much. Uh, my first question is whether you know all the uh, increase in regas tariffs have been honored uh, for for the current year so far. Yes, yes, it is being honored. It is as per the contract. There is no issue. Five percent hike is there, and for the Raj Gas contract, it is uh, on first of Jan 2024. It has been done. It is 62.90. 62.90. It is being collected also. Okay. There is okay. no issue. Okay, great. And and so for the Kochi as well, right? Yes, Kochi as well. Uh, and the Kochi, uh, uh, it, the increase should happen from March, right? Uh, first of April. April. First of April. April. 
understood. Uh, secondly, if you can also talk a bit about the capex on your Gangavaram plant and uh, the Bahir Jetty, what is the timeline for completion of those? The Gangaram we are not working, we are going to Gopalpur, so as we have declared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Earlier we were uh, doing that, we are thinking of going to Gangavaram, but now Gangavaram is no longer uh, there. And mm -hmm. it is Gopalpur, we are putting up a terminal, and it is in the process. And uh, as you know that uh, we are already, already signed with the Gopalpur Port Limited, all the sublease agreement and the other land lease, land, all agreements have been signed. And uh, we are now in process of uh, uh, undertaking that project and uh, it will take around uh, three years. Initially, we are thinking of uh, some FSRU based terminal, but uh, it seems that FSRU's availability is also very, uh, very poor. And uh, if we don't get it, we will go straight away to land based terminal. So that we will need some additional land for that we are pursuing with them. And as in when we get it, maybe instead of going for FSRU, in future we may go for land-based terminal. But as of now, approval is for FSRU-based terminal only. Right. And while you are negotiating with, with Qatar, are you negotiating for higher volume for this terminal as well, or is it just renewal of existing volume? It is just renewal of the contract. Okay. So volume for this will be fresh contract with some other... Outtaker, other party. No, no. It's as renewal means everything renewal means whatever volume will be coming, it will be coming on behalf of the existing outtakers only. Right, but not the additional volume. Not additional volume. Additional volume we are not taking. Okay, and and update on the jetty and jetty. Uh, we are in the process of. Uh, finalizing the details and uh, award the contract and uh, it will be having a cost of around uh, 1700 crores and mm -hmm. uh, uh, we hope that after it is awarded uh, it will take another 36 month period to complete that jetty and that jetty will be diverse, diversified in fact from the point of view that it can import propane, ethane as well as LNG. So, it is uh, thought that, that once this is uh, commissioned, then we will have more flexibility in operation. And uh, perhaps uh, for the upcoming petrochemical project also, it can bring propane from outside. And if we uh, also, maybe for the chain also, we can import. So this is uh, the detail of uh, this uh, jetty. And uh, another thing, uh, tanks are also coming up. So tanks will be commissioned by June 2024. <coughs> okay. around is the capex. Expansion will be completed by March 2025 of 5 MTP at the age. So this right. is the details of other projects. And lastly, in your Sorry. new... Sorry to interrupt, sir. Um, it, this will be the last question from you. Okay. Uh, I'll request you to rejoin, please. Sure. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, this will be the last question for today, which is from the line of Mini, Mani Kantha Garre from Franklin Templeton, India. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, hope I'm audible. Thanks for providing me the opportunity. Sir, I have just one question with respect to this uh, uh, agreement which I have made with uh, uh, off-takers on the user pay charges. So you said any additional volumes that the off-takers bring on top of the committed volumes will be offset against this uh, CY21-22 charges. Just a clarification here, if not for the situation wherein, uh, you know, user pay charges would have, if, if they were paid in say 21 and 22 itself, you would have gotten additional revenues from the additional volumes which they will be bringing in 24, 25. So effectively you are foregoing that additional revenues just to resolve this for user pay charges. Is that the right understanding? No, this is not correct because what I am telling you, because now energy prices have softened and they are now thinking to bring more volume because to, they want to settle this issue. It's not that had we had they paid it, then they would not they would have brought the additional value. They may not have made even the effort for bringing additional value. Now they are making effort how to set it off. So this is the difference. Actually, if you don't intend to bring it, then you will not bring it. But now they have intention to bring it. 
so they are somehow managing to bring the volume more volume so that this user pay can be adjusted so this is now and not adjusted this can be waived off and in fact uh, additional volume will uh, give them so less that they have brought in and uh, so now their user pay charges will no longer be applicable after waiving off so this is not correct that they would have brought it additionally this is not correct they are now making effort to bring more value just so to how should uh, we think about uh, save 26 onwards sir how should we think about save 26 onwards then now so they will not be making any additional efforts to bring additional volumes then is it hey, they may bring or they may not bring but now they will additionally make an effort to bring it so this is the difference at our terminal only otherwise they can take it to any other terminal right so okay. they, are, they are free to take it anywhere na sure okay sir thank you Thank you. As that was the last question for today, I would now like to hand the conference over to the management for their closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much. Thanks to all of you for joining this conference. And uh, uh, just I want to reassure you that, as I have already said, that we will continue to make effort to uh, this uh, increase the profitability of the company. to do uh, some extra things so that we have some extra bottom line uh, additions to patronet so this effort will continue and uh, only thing you have to report confidence in patronet lng and we assure you that we are making all efforts to make company a bigger company and uh, to increase the wealth of the shareholder whatever efforts we can do we are all always will continue to make all efforts thank you very much thank you members of the management on behalf of philip capital india private limited that concludes this conference we thank you for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines thank you thank you thank you very much thank you